A subscriber recommended a book to me on my last video, The Order of Time by Carlo Rovelli, which I'm excited to read. And this got me thinking, perhaps I can add value to others by providing a list of some of the books on watches that I love, which you can all consider. Hence this video on my top eight watch books. I hope that you enjoy. So at eight, we have Longitude by Darva Savell. This book charts the fascinating history of the prize for the development of the first marine chronometer, a very important goal in the world of navigation at sea, as it enabled you to define longitude, that is, where you are at sea from east to west. In particular, it focuses in on the character of John Harrison, a wooden clockmaker from the Humberside area up north in England, and definitely not one of the science establishment astronomy-focused characters which was more the preferred method for solving the longitude problem. The storytelling is excellent and it was the basis for a two-part TV film, including the great and the good of British acting, such as Jeremy Irons, Michael Gambon, Bill Nye, and Stephen Fry. It was a great source for my video on the history of British watchmaking, and where it was a key event, and I recommend wholeheartedly both the book and the film. At seven, we have the book Retro Watches by Josh Sims and Mitch Greenblatt, with photography by Tyler Little. Now, this book is an excellent curation of some retro curiosities from the period between the 60s to the 70s. They seem to share my love for lit watches, fantastic, as there's a whole bunch of them in there, and there's a real variety of watch brands referenced, not just those that you may expect. They provide the year of release, movement details, relative value, and notable features, as well as some background context into the watch, with excellent photos throughout that really bring out the character of the pieces. A really fun coffee table book to read, which I've dipped into several times. At six, we have the Bible of Lip Watches, Does Er a Conta by Marie Pierre Coustin and Daniel Galazzo. This book is fantastic with a unique level of detail and comprehensiveness on lip. The story is told from multiple angles within the chapters, including the pre-war history, during the two world wars, an incredible story, and up to the later industrial action, a pivotal point within the labor movement, as well as use of designers such as Roger Talbot's Mac 2000, which is an icon that most will have seen. The real kicker though, is that the book is only in French, which means that you are relying on the interpretations of the book, such as the excellent summaries from Nick Downs, or you have to translate passages individually that look like they're irrelevant. Now, one resource that transcends language when you have the book in person is at the back section of the book. You have all of the different movements from Lip and a comprehensive view and list of different watches that use those movements, including some of the non-watch military equipment that they developed. So if you're into Lip watches, you absolutely have to have this book. At five, we have the book Times Pendulum, written by Joe Ellen Barnett. Uh, there were some mixed reviews on this one on the website, but I enjoy it. It was a nice popular overview, written in an easy to understand way for non-technical people like me. The thing that she does really well is giving a feel for the mindset or perspective change that the introduction of new technologies for capturing the perception of time caused in the world, including like our daily patterns of behavior and how society was organized at the time. I think it's really nicely done and covers a very broad sweep of time, so to speak. Uh, so worth a read to shake up your perspective. At four, we have The Watch, a 20th century style history by Alexander Barter. The nice thing about this book is that it breaks things up into decades, so you can really see the icons of each one and the key trends. As well as more general iconic watches, there's also an allusion to particular technologies, such as jump hours in the 20s, diving watches in the 50s, and so on. The photography in this book is amongst the best of the books that I own, with really large pictures of some classic watches. I like the sections introducing each decade as well, which give a little flavour for the uh, kind of aesthetic feel of that decade. A fun reference book, but one for folks looking at the more mainstream icons, I think, rather than the weird and wonderfuls, which is where most of my videos are focused. So I've actually weirdly not used it too much. At three is the book that I think pretty much every person owns who owns a watch, and is the background for more Instagram photos than any other watch book I can think of, A Man and His Watches by Matt Frenek. Of course, this is understandable. It really taps into that romance of the man and his watch, and the idea that a lot of people tap into that their watch is almost a definition of them as a person. 
What I like about this is that it isn't just Rolexes and Patek Philippe's, although there are quite a few, but also includes things such as the Timex Iron Man, my own personal childhood watch, and a dyed G-Shock. I must admit, I've not really read the actual tech stories in this one that much. There's been more of a flick through coffee table read. I suspect that's the case for many, but it's such an icon of watch bookery and a fun romantic idea that I had to include it here. At two is one of my absolute best sources for what I do on my channel, which is Peter Donson's amazing watch, History of the Modern Wristwatch, which focuses primarily on newer technologies in watches, such as electromechanical watches, quartz with the various technologies embedded into that, such as solar, LED, LCD, and so on. The photos are great, but more of a functional reference rather than the photography style and other books that I've mentioned. And it's definitely more of a reference book with a heavy focus on the precision of historical points that are made. A section that has been invaluable for me is in the back, where there are timelines for multiple watch technological innovations, for example, melody alarms, calculator watches, pulse counting watches, and many more. These have been so useful in my videos. You can actually read this book online for free, but I definitely recommend getting the book. You can see he has taste of an excellent lip on the front. I will source one of these one day. At one, my favorite, uh, favorite watch book, which is a core source for me and many of my videos, which is Electrifying the Wristwatch by Lucien Trueb, Gunther Ram, and Peter Benzig. This watch book is super comprehensive in its coverage of electric and electronic watches, very laser focused on the stories behind the development of particular modules by different companies, including the suppliers of the individual components. For LED and LCD watches, this resource is second to none. My favorite chapters are the country specific ones, which include Switzerland, Germany, France, Britain, a short chapter, unfortunately, and Japan, Eastern Europe and USSR, South Korea and the USA. How cool is that? If you've any interest in electronic watches, you're simply doing yourself a disservice by not owning this book. So there are my top eight watch books. I hope some of them are new to you and that may inspire some folks get to get into reading in this hobby. Honestly, it's half the fun for me. I'll likely do another video in future on my online sources. If this was useful to you, do please consider liking and subscribing. I'm pushing on the way to 500 subscribers now, which is halfway to the overall goal of a thousand, so it does keep me motivated. Other videos on my channel include my History of Casio series, as well as deep dives into particular geographies like German and Soviet watches, as well as specific brands like Lip. You should check them out. And that's it from me, and I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day.